Welcome to this AlphaCool installation video. In this video you will find step-by-step -step instructions on how to install an AlphaCool water cooling kit. AlphaCool offer a wide range of different water cooling kits. We will be demonstrating the installation process using an Intel First Class Livingstone kit. The installation of other kits follows the same basic procedure though. Here are the components found in our kit. A HF14 Livingstone CPU water block including the mounting hardware and some thermal grease. Three AlphaCool CoolMove 120mm fans, one Eheim 1000 station, a combination of a pump and a reservoir, a Nexus Extreme 3 triple radiator, six compression fittings, one bottle of cooling fluid, two meters of PUR tubing, four spacers for installing the radiator, and one connector with a jumper cable for your power supply. Before we get started with the installation, a few cautionary notes. Always test your hardware with air cooling before switching to water cooling. Make sure you are statically discharged before you touch your CPU, mainboard or any other hardware component. Water cooling is risky if you aren't careful and take your time to do the installation. Proceed with care and at your own risk. For the installation we will need a drill with a 3 or 3.5mm drill bit, screwdrivers and a tube cutter or a good pair of scissors. In case some unexpected modifications need to be made to the case, it's also always good if you have a multi-tool available. We begin by mounting the radiator to the case. Remove the two stop fittings from the radiator before flushing it thoroughly to make sure it's free from residue. Since we will be working on the case itself, it should be empty. The radiator will be mounted on the case's lid using screws and spacers provided. Our case comes with a 120mm fan pre-installed in the lid. We remove this fan and make use of two of the screw holes for installing the radiator. We will require a total of four screw holes on the lid. The holes must be arranged in a rectangle 105mm wide and 345mm long. Use a 3 or 3.5mm drill bit to drill these holes. Now we will need the spacers and screws. Add a washer onto a screw and thread it through one of the screw holes from the inside of the case. From the top, one of the spacers can be placed onto the screw. Next, grab a hold of the screw from the top and apply a screwdriver from below. This will make it easier to fasten the screw to the radiator. Repeat this same procedure for every one of the four screws. I recommend starting with two of the diagonally opposed screw holes to give the radiator some stability as soon as possible. The radiator comes with two different sets of screws. To attach the fan we will need to use the shorter screws. It doesn't matter whether you install the fan facing upwards or downwards. Simply place the fan on top of the radiator, align the screw holes and fasten it with four screws. Repeat this for each of the three fans. Next we will install the CPU water block. For this we will need to be able to access the back of the mainboard. Take one of the screws from the water block's mounting material, slip a washer over it and insert it through one of the screw holes around the back of the CPU socket. Add another washer from the front of the mainboard and then attach one of the plastic screw nuts, tightening it all the way down. Repeat this same procedure for each one of the four screws included with the block. Now take the thermal grease supplied with the block and apply a small amount of it onto the CPU. You can use a finger wrapped in plastic foil or a small plastic spatula to spread the thermal material out evenly. In the end you should have a thin, even layer covering the entire surface of the CPU. Now you can remove the protective foil from the bottom of the water block and place the block onto the CPU. Slip another washer over each one of the mounting screws, followed by the springs. Finally, add screw nuts to fasten the water block down. Ideally, you should add two nuts diagonally from each other and tighten them down simultaneously, ensuring even mounting pressure. You can keep tightening until the springs are almost fully compressed. 
This concludes the installation of the Livingstone CPU water block. You can now install the mainboard and the rest of your hardware inside the case before proceeding to the next step. Next we will install the pump. It comes with a small PCB which manages its power supply. The cable attached to the pump is connected to this PCB via two clamps. The clamps are loosened and fastened using a screwdriver and it doesn't matter which cable goes to which clamp. Once the pump is connected, we attach a 4-pin Molex connector from the PSU to the PCB and install it in a free extension slot. Now it's time to attach the fittings to the pump, the radiator and the CPU block. You can freely choose where to attach the straight fittings and where to use the 90 degree elbow fittings. It simply depends on where the individual components are located and how the tubing is going to be routed. You might have to experiment with a few different possibilities before finding the optimal solution. When fastening the fittings, it's always sufficient to do so by hand. Using tools to tighten the fittings can lead to damaging your components. Next, we will place the pump inside the case. It can be placed anywhere where there is enough space for it, as long as it remains upright. No matter whether this is in the middle, higher up, or lower down inside the case. You will also find two Velcro pads that can be used to attach the pump to a surface. Now that we have installed the fittings, it's time to connect the three components with tubes. Whether the water goes from the pump to the radiator first and then to the CPU block or the other way around doesn't matter. You only have to make sure that the water enters the CPU block at a thread marked I for IN. The pump's threads are also marked, letting you know which one is the IN and which the outlet. When setting up the tube routing, apply the following rule of thumb. A short and simple loop is always better than a longer loop. In other words, keep it simple. To install the tubing, follow this procedure. Remove the cap nut from one of the compression fittings and slide it over one end of the tube. Now slide the tube over the fitting and fasten it by screwing the cap nut back on. The required length of the tube can be measured out by hand, and the tube is then cut with a tube cutter or scissors. Now attach the other end of the tube to the second fitting, again fastening it with the cap nut. In this manner you can connect all three components to a closed loop. In order to properly fill and bleed the loop, we will need to apply a jumper to the power supply unit. This is done so that the PSU can be started without the whole PC starting up as well. Before we apply the jumper, all power connectors should be pulled from the hardware. It's particularly important to remove both the mainboard's power connectors. The pump is left connected to the PSU, and just to provide some more load to the PSU, we can also attach the fans to it via adapters. Make sure that the PSU is switched off and connected to the power grid. Now connect the adapter with the jumper cable to the 24-pin mainboard power connector. Then remove the cap off the top of the pump's reservoir. The reservoir can now be filled with the cooling fluid using a funnel or directly from the bottle. If you switch on the PSU now, the pump will immediately start up. You'll notice that it will suck up all the water within the reservoir within a few seconds, which is why the PSU needs to be switched off again almost immediately. The pump should never be left running dry. The best way to fill the loop is to start the pump while pouring cooling fluid into the reservoir. As soon as you can't keep up with filling and the fluid level gets low, switch the pump off again. After a short time, the loop will be filled and you'll see the fluid returning to the pump through the reservoir's inlet. Now all that's left is bleeding, which means making sure all of the air bubbles are eliminated from the loop. This is best done by switching the pump on and off a few times and carefully tipping the case to all sides while the pump is running. Once the bleeding process is complete, you can seal off the pump's reservoir again. The connector with the jumper cable can now be removed from the PSU again and all of the hardware components can be reconnected. Congratulations, you have completed the installation of this water cooling kit.